It's Thursday, August 24th, 2023. Let's talk about the news. From the New York Times, in latest moon race, India first to land in southern polar region. Mere days after a failed landing in the same region by Russia's space agency, the Indian Space Agency has successfully landed a craft in the southern polar region of the moon, becoming the first nation to do so, and only the fourth country to have ever successfully soft-landed on the lunar surface. This spacecraft consists of a lander and a rover, the latter of which will explore the thus far unexplored, at ground level at least, southern polar lunar region, which contains water ice in unknown quantities and in forms that may or may not be easily attainable. So this mission is important for India and its credibility as a space-faring nation, but also for humanity in our ongoing exploration of the moon, which includes figuring out how to best establish a long-term presence there, which will require water for the survival of human occupants and potentially for the production of fuel as well. From Bloomberg, target of European space debris removal mission is itself hit by space debris. Somewhat less optimistic space news here, a portion of a European Vega rocket that broke off during a 2013 mission and which has been in orbit around the Earth ever since, tracked by the European Space Agency as part of a planned 2026 mission to remove such debris from orbit, has been struck by another piece of in-orbit trash, breaking it into several smaller pieces. The EU Space Agency is saying this turn of events reinforces the importance of that 2026 Clear Space One mission, as this sort of splintering of orbital debris caused by collisions with other orbital debris is exactly what they're hoping to prevent, as more rockets launching more stuff into orbital lanes makes a theorized situation called Kessler Syndrome, a term for cascades of such collisions littering our more useful orbits with fast-moving junk making space travel and the deployment of satellites, borderline impossible, more likely, which in turn makes operating in orbit around Earth more expensive and fraught. And from Reuters, Equinor opens world's largest floating wind farm in Norway. The world's largest offshore wind farm located off the Norwegian coast and consisting of 11 massive wind turbines entered full operation on Wednesday. This wind farm will provide 88 megawatts of energy, which will cover about 35% of the yearly power demand for five nearby offshore oil and gas platforms, as part of a larger effort by the Norwegian government to reduce their CO2 emissions by 50% by 2030. This project has been controversial as it's producing clean energy for fossil fuel production purposes, and some environmentalists are saying the Norwegian government should just stop producing fossil fuels rather than propping up existing sources of them using this kind of renewable energy infrastructure. The government has said, however, that this will allow the country to continue generating an array of energy products during a transitional era, while also continuing to expand its renewable energy footprint. If you're finding some value in One Sentence News, consider leaving a quick review wherever you get your podcasts and or sharing the show with a friend. You can find out more about this show or subscribe to the email version at onesentencenews.com. And you can support this and other related projects like the Let's Know Things and Brain Lenses podcasts at understandery.com.